Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'll cover the essential apps I think every medical student should have. So this is my home screen and I've got basically two pages full of apps which I'll go through. I've just got a folder called Med, you might wish to organize yours in a similar way, where I've put most of the essential apps but I'll also cover the rest as well. So the first one is up to date. This is basically like a reference slash encyclopedia. You can search up a condition and they will have more information about it. So for example, there we go. If I type appendicitis in adult, it will say, right, management of appendicitis. And it will give me an article of, you know, just what I need to keep in mind when managing appendicitis. It's quite lengthy, as you can see. So this is more like a kind of a Wikipedia for medicine. It covers, you know, things that you might need to look up or things that perhaps, you know, uncommon conditions that you haven't heard about. If you need to quickly research what it is, then you can use up to date to do that. The next one is BMJ Best Practice. This is similar to up to date, but it uses kind of the UK guidelines. I think both of them actually use the UK guidelines. And you know, everyone says it's really, really good. Admittedly, I should probably use it more than I do. But again, it acts as a quick reference tool. So for example, with appendicitis, the good thing about BMJ Best Practice is that it's laid out in a much more easier to use way than up to date. So if I wanna actually read up on the pathophysiology of it, I can you know, go over to theory and click etiology, and there we go, you've got your pathophysiology right there. If however, I want to quickly see, okay, what do I do to diagnose it? What kind of approach should I actually take? It tells you, you know, what you should be asking for in your history and your examination. So someone should have abdominal pain and it tells you how common this symptom is. You know, they might have nausea and vomiting, that's also common. They might have a palpable mass, but that tells you it's actually an uncommon finding. And you know, you can use it to work out what investigations you might need. So the first line investigations would be your full blood count, CRP, abdo, ultrasound and contrast enhanced CT. So it can kind of help you to see, perhaps if you don't understand the decision that's being made, you can look it up on BMJ best practice and understand, oh, okay, that's why they ordered this investigation, or, oh, okay, these are the symptoms the patient presented with, and that's why this was the most likely diagnosis. So it's very useful for essentially consolidating your learning. The next one is microguide. This is something that junior doctors use all the time on the ward. It basically helps you prescribe the right antibiotics for certain conditions. So for example, let's say if I want to treat a chest infection, I can just go over to body systems, respiratory, and there we go. Let's say they've got a community acquired pneumonia. And it tells you, okay, you need to calculate the curve 65 score. And then it tells you, depending on what your score is, these are the treatments that you give the patient. And you know, this obviously depends on the local hospital guidelines, so you can download your microguide for your trust guidelines. So when you first open up the app, it tells you what trust you're working for. So then that way you can see, you know, in the hospital that your placement is in, what kind of guidelines they follow when treating things with antibiotics. Next one is this Human Anatomy Atlas. Now, I don't really use this that often, but I just downloaded it because normally I think you have to pay some money for it, but through our medical school subscription, they give it to us for free. So I thought, why not have it here as a reference tool? So, you know, if you're going into theatre, or if you're about to see a surgery, you can just quickly read up on the anatomy so you know before you get grilled and have no idea. So here, for example, you know, it shows me the thorax abdomen area and I can just pan around. I can select on different layers and it tells me this is the greater omentum. I can then cut that layer away using dissection to see what's further deep to that layer. And then here, you know, you've got your ilium. I can then dissect that away to see what's behind the ilium. Then you've got all your vessels here, so you can just click on each one and identify what they are. So this is your inferior vena cava. This one here is your right colic artery. This is your superior mesenteric. And you can really zoom in and try and work out, you know, exactly where that's originating, where it goes. So it's very cool for learning anatomy. Next one is you've got your BNF. This is obviously an essential app to search up drug doses. Let's say if someone needs to have allopurinol, you can just click on it and click on the indications and you can see, right, okay, 
for gout, this is the dose that you need and you need to take it after food. And when a doctor is actually prescribing a medication, they might you might hear them asking about the kidney function, you know, is anything wrong with your kidneys? And you can kind of go over to renal impairment to try and work out, okay, why did they ask this? Is it because this drug? You have to be careful in someone who's got renal impairment. So as you can see with allopurinol, it says use with caution because it can accumulate in someone who's got renal impairment. So then you can kind of use this as well for your learning and to kind of work out what the common drugs are and just go through and read a bit about them so you know a bit about the commonly used drugs. It might even be just to refresh your memory on, you know, you've heard of allopurinol, you can't quite remember what it does, can go over to indications and see okay it's used for gout whatever the other indications that the certain medication is for so the next app is called wiki em this was recommended to me by one of the doctors in my a e placement essentially this is like a reference tool for emergency medicine doctors so here for example if i go on clinical pages and i click on acls tachycardia for example it tells me the the algorithm for adult tachycardia. You know, this is what you should do, this is what you should know. So again, it's kind of like a reference tool for common presentations in the emergency department. So if you're on your emergency placement, then this might be a useful app to have. This next one is called MSD Pro. This is actually using the American guidelines rather than the UK ones, but it's still useful to go through to learn about a certain condition. And the reason why I have this app is it's a bit more comprehensive than some of the other ones. And it just explains things in a good, easy way. So for example, I might go over to OBS and gynae, I might go over to uterine fibroids, and there I can just read a quick summary about what that condition is. And then I can quickly see, you know, a diagram of where the fibroids grow, the so symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and so this is laid out in a very easy to read kind of natural format that you'd expect. Whereas, you know, up to date might be a bit harder to navigate. So although I don't use this for management options because it uses the American guidelines, it's still useful to learn about a particular condition and to get a quick summary of what something is. The next one is NUH guidelines. This again was a app that was recommended to me by one of the emergency medicine doctors. It actually uses the Nottingham University Hospital Trust guidelines. So if you work there, then that's good. But even if you don't, it's useful as a reference tool because it contains all of the policies that this hospital uses. So for example, if I go in case of emergency I can just type you know a and I can see okay so acute asthma this is the guideline that they use to treat acute asthma in this hospital so it might be useful if you know you don't know the local guidelines in your hospital and you just want a brief overview of the basic fundamental steps that are carried out when someone presents with acute asthma because you know as a student you may not have access to those specific hospital guidelines but this just gives you a general overview of what can be done next if i just show you this tools folder this app bookshelf clinical key this we actually get access to through our university and what it allows you to do is just download some books so i've downloaded a few books and i can use that as a reference tool so for example this one kumar and clark's clinical medicine i can use that as a reference tool if I come across a condition that I may have forgotten or need to read up on. So for example here, you know, systemic sclerosis, scleroderma, it tells me what I need to know about this, it tells me the pathophysiology, the clinical features, everything I need to basically know about that disease. And I can easily just use the search function and, you know, let's say, you know, pericarditis, there we go, I can just search it up and it will show me all the instances which has pericarditis. And I can just go through that and use that basically on the wards to aid my learning. This is especially useful if you're on a ward round and the doctor says something and you just have no idea what that means. You can use the search functionality, search up what that means and learn a bit more about it so you understand what's going on. The next one is Notion. I've already made videos on how I use Notion in medical school. So one of the ways is I've got my notes on Notion here. So for example, if I go on hematology, you can see white blood cells, and this is a diagram showing me the different types of white blood cells. You can see that I've kind of put the notes inside toggles 
to actually aid active recall. So for example, if I've got my blood groups toggle, instead of just passively reading the information, it helps me actively try and remember what's inside that toggle, and then I can reveal the answer by opening the toggle and having a read. So this is useful as a reference tool and as a learning tool and also to make notes as well. Another thing I use to make notes is craft. The reason why craft is useful is because it works offline and on the boards you don't always have internet connection so you can make your notes on craft. So for you know searchable notes that don't require an internet connection that work offline, craft is really really good. So for example I've got here my a &E assessment, I've just got you know the airway breathing, all the steps to follow and that way I can use that as a reference tool and I can use that to make notes and keep updating things as I go along. Next I've got the Kindle app. An iPad is a good tool to use for reading. So for example here I've got Awakening Your Ikigai by Ken Mogi. I think I read this book or maybe I started reading it and got bored. But anyway, you can just download ebooks and read it in your downtime, quite self-explanatory. Next I've got a calculator app because the iPad doesn't have an inbuilt calculator and that's obviously useful for a variety of functions where you need the calculator quickly. And so I've pinned that onto my taskbar so I have easy access to use it. Next I've got Procreate, this is a drawing app I use to make my ophthalmology illustrations. So I can use the Apple Pencil and I can, you know, make illustrations. Next, I've actually got Notability and GoodNotes as my note-taking apps. I prefer GoodNotes just because it's a bit more easier to use. So, you know, I can use my Apple Pencil that I've got and I can just use it to annotate notes. So, for example, this I just downloaded the medical school curriculum to kind of highlight things I need to go over. But of course I can also add new pages and this is where I can just write some notes. Next I've got Anki, of course I use Anki a lot. You can see there's a lot of videos about Anki on my channel. So check those out if you haven't already. But one thing I like to turn on on the iPad is the scratch pad mode. And what this lets you do is if you've got an Apple Pencil, you can just write out your thoughts as you answer a question. And then in the next, card it will get rid of those um, annotations for you so this can be good if you think through your Anki cards like I do. Before I was using paper but now I discovered this scratch card functionality I can you know save the environment and do this thinking out loud um, right here on the scratch pad so that's pretty pretty handy to have if you use Anki. Now another kind of note taking it's not really such a note taking it's more of a mind mapping tool is called my notes so for example here I use it to make um, mind maps the advantage of this app is that it essentially allows you to have an infinite scrolling page so that if you've got mind maps which just get bigger and bigger there's no need to worry because you can just keep extending the space and just keep writing so that allows you to kind of explode your thoughts out so that's pretty handy if you use mind maps. So those were some of the essential apps I use as a medical student. If you are new to my channel, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Let me know down below if there's any apps that you use as well as a medical student, which I haven't covered in this video. With that being said, thanks for watching and I'll catch you again in my next video.